This movie is about men becoming friends and the women whose lives they fuck up along the way. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the women who get to watch. Brunch. Hit it, boys! <laughs> Okay, Patreon gang, welcome to Tomato Fights, first episode. We watched two movies with the same Rotten Tomato score, put them up against each other, probably have a whole lot of nonsense in there. Our first guest is our friend, Katie Nolan. What's up, Katie? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's yes. up, what's up? How are we doing, guys? Good. It's been a while. Yeah. I know. It's been a really long time, but we've also been sitting here talking for 20 minutes, so it's hard for me to pretend like I haven't been doing that. But yeah, it's been a very long time. It's very good to see you. Been a, a weird week, but happy to be on the on the episode, the very first episode of, what is it? Tomato? Tomato Fights. What do you think of the idea? Right, sure. we, we mainly I think just it's care great. I mean, about how people receive the idea. You make it difficult to to give you any feedback on the idea because you texted me with like, got a million dollar idea, <laughs> which was like, well, I then I don't want to, don't let me get in the way. I think it's a great idea. I don't know that I would have called it million dollar, but you know what? I probably wouldn't have called other million dollar idea a million dollar idea either so like i got a terrible business sense i will say not to help you segue forward but uh i was shocked that the two movies for today's podcast had the same score on rotten tomatoes so i think that's kind of what the charm of this is going to be I, we certainly won't be the the charm of it but i think mainly realizing the two movies Pete, does he always speak for you like that because you could easily be the charm of it yeah um, you could be charming i mean if one of us was going to be the charm of it it would be me Oh, I I, leg I sincerely disagree with that. <laughs> I know Not you do. Legit, no. Like if I if I need to be charming, I don't need to be right now. So I won't. Yes, be. and so when do you? Why don't you need to be right now? I would love it because if you I'm could be friends. just a little for a charming. second. No. Okay. No. Well, it's your podcast, it's so don't let time. me tell you what this to do. This is not the time to be charming. Okay. Being professional All right. here. All business. Jesus, grow up, Catherine. So tell me again about the charm of it. Okay, the charm of mm. it is just realizing that two movies have the same Rotten Tomato score and. Like, uh, what is it? Uh, Mamma Mia 2 and Crazy Stupid Love have the same tomato score? That's, that's fucking that's, awesome. I mean, I've never seen Mamma Mia 2. Oh, hmm. You are no friend we of ours. thought we were friends. <laughs> yeah. This is like the Paddington Mamma Mia 2 podcast, isn't yes. it? Yeah, yeah. I forget. I forget the type of taste. I forget to recalibrate based on your tastes. When was the last time that you had, like, a, an adult sleepover with a friend? Um, like so my boyfriend doesn't live here, <laughs> but is here a lot. So pro I've been doing an adult sleepover platonic with a friend. For friend. Yeah, that's. Mm, mm. Well, I mean, there were stretches there, but yeah, I get <laughs> not. It was probably a while ago. Okay, so the last adult sleepover sleepover that we had, we just got snacks and we watched Mamma Mia too, and it was the best. Yeah, time that's ever. what having a boyfriend is like for me. That's it. Dang. You just eat snacks and play video games and watch we did a whole bunch of during the pandemic we watched like roland emmerich films all those like end of the world movies calling them films does feel like a stretch but they're all just the logic in those movies i hope you touch on some of those on this here brand new debut million dollar podcast yes that's the next episode that we're taping right yes. after you okay, got to bang good. out two cool. and i'm movies. the third host or you're saying i'm a guest in the next week's you replace me with somebody else because I, I was thinking of making <laughs> whatever you're up to. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking of making like the third person lead the conversation and just host mm. it and not tell Oof. them until it starts. Oof. So, that's, okay. uh, Katie, the floor that's is if, yours. That's really good if you get every guest one time. It's a very good like, yes. look, we'll have one great date and then you're never going to want to talk to me again. Oh, I made it just would be all. very funny to bring somebody on like a Zoom call and be like, OK, here are the points that we need you to hit in the intro and good yeah. luck. And you're just like, oh, because I mean, you'll see that most people don't say no. That was most of my job so far has been someone hands you something and you're like, oh, I guess this is how it goes. So yeah. I'll do this. And Give, also we have an ad read. I was so, going to say. I mean, 18 minutes, Ooh, please. I can do that. I can. You I can are, you are great a great ad, ad read person. Thank I do you know very this. much. And you just call them back and ask for a little bit more, which I'm not saying anything the industry is. You know what I'm saying? You guys go ahead. Do you think? Yeah. Well, we're going to do the ad read thing of like, <laughs> do not read verbatim. And then we just, the person oh, just man. reads it verbatim Those are the anyway. Best. And it's like, the bullet they... points that you're like, well, what a, you used very descriptive adjectives. If you didn't want me to read it verbatim, who are these for? Our favorite thing in ad reads is um, if there's anything involving hair loss, they note one of the notes is there's discreet packaging so oh. just you want to yeah, men don't yourself. like us to know that you don't like your hair and that it's leaving we mix it it's into a, gotta every be a secret now 
They should. All those companies anything. are just like. It's like how they sell us tampons and pads. It's like shh. Just don't, don't let anyone. anybody know. You're bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Our secret. And they whisper in all the. Isn't ads there as actually well. like a brand called a Secret? Pad called Secret. Yes. I knew it wouldn't <laughs> land in this room, but I did it for the ladies listening. Shout out to my girls. We're just two. We were just crushing beer. Called brunch. And wings you gotta have. Here. There's gotta be girls here, right? A lot of girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, girls. What's up? <laughs> Where the girls it's your boy. At. <laughs> it's your boy. Like <laughs> Maury gave you the bad news. All right. The first one that we're doing is Jerry Maguire. It's a battle of 84s. Crazy. 1996 Cameron Crowe rom com Jerry Maguire versus 2009 political thriller State of Play starring Russell Crowe, Rachel McAdams, and wouldn't be anything brunch if it didn't include Ben Affleck. I had not heard of this second movie until Pete really wanted to do this duo because he was like, one of these is a Ben Affleck movie. I'm a big Ben Affleck guy, so. Yeah. You, so you had seen this already? I had not. Play? I had not. But no, I you were was just watching it actually 15. You're the reason that we're late to film yes, it because you had yet to watch it. I'll tell you, uh, I didn't finish it. I, I think I said this to you before. I don't think we were recording yet, but you guys have, it's your first day of school and I'm bringing last day of school energy. It was like, you guys gave me homework and I was totally going to do it. And then uh, something happened. And then I was like, sick, I'm off for a, oh my God, wait, I have to do this podcast. And so I had to watch these movies last night through state of play. I got a little bit lost. And then I was like, yeah, I can't, I've got most of it, but I didn't finish it because it was not worth the score going into it. I'm like, if this is tied with Jerry Maguire, this is going to be a, pretty decent movie um i was not spoiler alert i wasn't a, a huge fan of it oh i mean i will tell you you're missing out on a twist then this is a movie that has a no i kind of was aware of the twist movies. but i'm gonna need you to walk me through it i'm yeah. just not gonna have a smart opinion on the twist but it's it lost me it lost me well okay do we want to start with jerry or yeah, do we want to start yeah once we'll yeah start with jerry Maguire. and we will uh, get to state of play after uh jerry Maguire. Story of a sports agent who grows a conscience and loses all of his friends and marries Renee Zellweger. And there's the kid that everybody loved and was like the face of the 90s for a second. Uh, I think we would all agree. Lip like, Nikki, you got to drop his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shout what's out to it? Lip Nikki, Jonathan dude. Lip Nikki. Nikki. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, Keep his name on your lips. A big you can issue. do that for him. Th- this can't be the primary point about Jerry Maguire, but a big issue I have with this movie is there's only like. It's a movie with four male characters, and two of them are uh, Rod and Ray. Way too confusing when they're talking about one it's an insane being note. missing. That's an insane or... thing to start the podcast. I confuse off with. characters. I confuse characters very, I very do easily. Too. So same with me. I was. I get lost that. I actually, points. you could uh, quiz me right now on the names of any of the characters in any of these movies. I don't think I would remember. Except maybe Jerry Maguire, that feels like a freebie. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Cruise's <laughs> character. You, you, mm-hmm, have to, mm-hmm. you have to know uh, Jay Moore's character. <sighs> I'm going to try to walk I mean, he's got a the, great name. through yeah. this podcast. Oh, yeah. He's, um, isn't it like Silver? He's got a name it's, that's a noun. It's the ultimate. They, they, they tried to make Fish? the ultimate no. that fucking guy mm-hmm. name. Yeah. What is it? Bob Sugar. It's Bob Sugar. There it is. Bob, Bob Sugar. Sugar. Does he ever use it in a pun? Is he ever like no. sugar sweet baby? Like no. you would think. He, he mainly would say some talks sort of... about like prostitutes. I think. Yeah, it's that's... A, it, he never uses it as a, as a pun. Like you would think that they drop "Give me some sugar" yeah. at some point at, at any point in this movie, but no. I think maybe the only compliment I'm comfortable giving Jay more publicly is that he plays a great prick. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. 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 Uh, but when was the last time? You guys had seen Jerry Maguire. I think I watched it on a plane. Uh, probably I'd, I would have said five years ago, but then I realized I've been in my house without leaving for almost two years now. So it was probably like seven years ago. I don't remember the last time that I watched it, but I do know that there are certain lines and stuff ingrained into my brain because the s- version of Secret Bruce Garden, yes, the mm-hmm. version of Secret Garden, was it like a LimeWire download that had it? It must have been. Or was it, I thought they or played, is there like a version I, of it? I could have sworn there used to be a thing where when a famous movie came out that had a famous song in it, they would put the scenes from the movie into the song and play it on the radio. I really do what? think- What? Really? They did that. Yes, it would be like a montage almost, but it was just audio, but you could hear the like background noise of the movie and then the dialogue. They did that with that Bruce Springsteen song. It might have just been a LimeWire thing, but I really think I remember them doing it on the radio. That was like a trend 
in the LimeWire ages where they would splice in pop culture things yes. or just random things into songs. Yeah, I remember, what a dumb... I remember the Jerry Maguire one, and then to get way darker, there was like a, a 9-11 en Enrique Iglesias yes. hero yes. version. Yes, yes, Oh, my why God. Why did somebody do so that, and why weird. did people listen to it? I'm telling you, I I really think it was on the radio. Maybe I burnt it onto a CD. God, I can just remember listening to that it in a car. That is such weird behavior. Like so I, I participated weird. in it, but it's so weird. This all for the well, we first were young. Time. We didn't know better. We didn't know. But that like that was there weird. were adults at the time, been... <laughs> right? And Those we adults existed. An... We watched an old movie on Amazon. We being uh, my boyfriend and I, we watched an old movie on Amazon. That's a Rudy Giuliani biopic where uh, James Woods plays Rudy Giuliani. And, and it's uh, before <laughs> it's before the I think it's before the it's definitely before the most recent chapter of the book. Uh, but it's uh, it's like after 9-11 they used in this terrible film uh, uh, real 9-11 footage. And I was like, this doesn't seem like it should be here this is like the a very inappropriate place for me to watch actual people experience their actual trauma in service of a james woods rudy giuliani it's very Jesus. strange i had so i yeah. had no idea that they did those like insert movie yeah. shit into it. and i think i'm realizing where were you what, and you know what, what it was aren't you a music probably, guy yeah. so that's probably buying invented. the, that's the actual music to yeah, support musicians yeah. yeah oh you've always yeah. been that mm -hmm. guy yeah, yeah. Legit okay. honestly once they I, I didn't stop using those things altogether. but legitimately when they were like if you like the artist and you like the song, why don't you go out and buy the CD? The guilt worked on you the very first time. I just kind of took guy. it at, yeah, I was also a Metallica fan. And of course, honestly, though, I, when I Radiohead know, like, told you you could pay whatever you wanted for In Rainbows, would you pay? Uh, nothing. Honestly, I didn't do it. I wasn't crazy about Radiohead at the time. What? Yeah. I'm fucking weird. I thought I'm, you were. I thought you were music smart. I've revered you. I am. So I love That's Radiohead. Gone. I I, I do here. love Radiohead, nope, but late. more more early stuff. Um, oh, yeah. I'd forgotten that Secret Garden was in this. It reminds no, boy, you a lot by this. playing it a whole time. Yes. Yes. I, I just fucking forgot. Every time I see Jerry Maguire, Man. I forget it's the, the first plot. Time. I forget yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. When they got married, I was like, yes, oh my I'm like, God, they got I completely married this? forgot this happened. The time moves very weirdly in Jerry Maguire. Absolutely. I can't tell yeah. if it's been two weeks or if I'm supposed to somehow know because Lip Nicky looks the exact same. And by exact same, I mean that kid has hair gel in his hair. No. Even if he's just woken up from being dead asleep. He's got hair gel in his hair. So Lip Nicky, I feel like I wonder if at some point he's going to sue somebody like the Nirvana baby where he's like he goes back and watches this movie and he's like, what the fuck? I was like three <laughs> years old or whatever it was. And I, I was walking around like I was six feet taller because of the stuff you had in my hair. My You know goodness. who should actually sue is any uh, single mom who watched this movie who made it seem like it's possible to make a three-year-old only have cute annoying, only have the like, oh, no, he keeps trying to offer up the ring because he's the ring bearer. What a silly kid. And it's he never does anything actually annoying. Like Tom Cruise and Renee Zellweger, who I'm sure have uh, names in this movie, but I will be referring to them as their real world names because that's how dumb I am. They have that whole like, I'm about to move to another place. And then he convinces her to stay conversation while Lip Nicky is sitting in the car. And at one point he gives Tom Cruise a helpful, encouraging nod. And I'm like, this kid is three. Any single mom watching this is like, that kid would be screaming. He'd be putting stuff in his mouth. He'd be crying. There's no way he would just be like, you go get her, Tom Cruise. To be fair, though, like the first 30 minutes of this movie is just spent on Renee Zellweger losing her child in various oh places. So oh I think that he God. might just be happy to be uh, in the presence of his mother for the rest of the movie. Not to draw a parallel too early before we even talk about state of play, but the way they paint Renelle Zell Zellweger with her Renee Zellweger with her kid is like the way they paint Rachel McAdams with a pen in the other movie, <laughs> where it's just like she can never have one. Someone else, ha a man, has to come help her. Yes. remember to keep this around. Yeah, they, uh, they, there's speaking of ch child actors. Uh, did you pick up on who the uh, the young kid was who told Jerry Maguire to go fuck himself at the beginning of the no, movie? No, I knew it was somebody. No, it's not. I knew. <laughs> you son I of knew a bitch. it was somebody. I'm so glad you know who it is. It's Drake Bell with a mullet. 
Whoa. No way. Yeah. Ooh, problematic, Drake Bell, yes, right? Didn't some, yes. Yeah, dude. The, uh, Disney. Disney very, gets in your very brain. Very inappropriate behavior with uh, young I think an people. underage, underage I'm person. Fi- allegedly. Oh, yes. Interesting. I don't, oh, my God. I don't have to worry as much. You don't have to say allegedly. allegedly. This, yeah. is, I don't know. this is a Patreon episode. Yeah, dude, so. I don't, yeah. This is great. <laughs> There's a, I'm still, uh, <laughs> you know, once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> There's a uh, There's a Lipnicki scene. I don't know, like 40 minutes into the movie where they're driving to the airport and the adults are just trying to do their thing, like exist, figuring out the plan. And in the back, the kid, Ray, is like, do you know the human, (laughs) do you know the human head weighs eight pounds? And they're like, oh, I guess it does. And I was watching that and I was like, that's kind of like basically all pete and i do <laughs> like people are trying just to talk things about like, things that do you, you want know? to talk about yeah. you know the adam duritz sing backup vocals in sixth avenue heartache and you're like oh i didn't but uh that's i didn't the, that's i don't even know who that a is conversation over here adam duritz from counting crows oh sure yeah no sixth i knew that i just you must have your audio cut out i think it was on your end i didn't i know who that is of course i do it was definitely and i and i wasn't singing uh 10th avenue freeze out in my head when you said sixth avenue what song are you talking about sixth avenue heartache by the wallflowers do you know i know that one jacob dylan Uh is the son of bob dylan yeah yeah Yeah. the same yeah yeah. i know that he's the son of i know that and i actually think they did one of these movie song things with a wallflower song really oh god i feel like they might have holy i'll find it holy smoke go back into my kazaa Man, yeah. and now that I think about it, how is the, how is the wallflowers not on the soundtrack for Perks of Being a Wallflower? Ooh. Uh, now that you think about it, that wasn't the first thing you thought of when you saw the name of the... A no. perk of being a wallflower is... Is being Bob Dylan You get to demand Adam huge Duritz. prices yeah. to put that shit in your movie, more yeah. so than other people. So they don't want to cut that check. Uh, on the Secret Garden thing, next time I'm around a sports writer... I'm going to just act like I love Springsteen, specifically Secret Garden. Secret Garden. <laughs> like, yeah, oh my, I, that's I my bit, though. Don't, I, don't call it Secret Garden. Authentic. Just call it the Jerry Maguire song. <laughs> he played the fucking yeah. Jerry Maguire song. <laughs> it was like the best set list I've ever seen him do. <laughs> Excuse me. I did love that song because growing that's up, that song, 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 especially with all those movie clips in it, I was like, boy, oh boy, that's what love sounds like. And now with adult eyes watching Jerry Maguire, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what love sounds Sounds like they were, these two are mentally ill in the first scene. One is having a breakdown and one is uh, looking at every couple that kisses and being like, she's trying to listen to his conversation in first class. There's no way she can hear that from Coach. And she's not in Economy Plus. She's in Coach and she's like leaning down on her knees, listening to him tell the story of proposing to someone. And you're like... Love yourself, Renee. While, while her kid is having an allergic reaction, yeah, by the right. way. To a and blanket? Also, the, I don't yeah. know what. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That doesn't check Why'd out. Why'd you get a blanket? The, I thought the flight attendant was going to be like, no, the, actually, you aren't supposed to have that. We'll bring that back up to the... But then, you know, she hits us with the line. when She's like, it's not a different class. It's a different life. Or something like and that. And her son. They used to have better meals, and now they have a better life. Yeah, yeah. Used to and be then the la- meal. then the lady closes the curtain. I'm like, excuse me, he finished his story. I mean, yeah. he didn't give him any privacy. Also, she was listening. Okay. Like closing the curtain isn't going to shut her out. For real. Yeah. For real. Uh, the show me the money scene, a classic, overrated, underrated. I would mm-hmm. posit that there is another Jerry yelling scene that is better than the show me the money scene. Is it the, how do they phrase it? Is it the part where it, he's talking to Rod and they're talking about how he robbed the Punani from a single mom? I could oh not my, believe. That was incredible. How, I could not believe how unfamous that line is. That's how many bangers there so are in this things. movie that I don't didn't remember that quote and I heard it and I was like, rob the Punani. That's amazing. And I think, when was, he I think says, it was Pootie Tang. Pootie Tang, that was it. Yeah, he robbed the Pootie Tang. Yeah. It was not Pootie Tang. I'm pretty I'm sure, pretty it sure it's Pootie Tang. Yeah. It's not Poonanny. Oh boy. It's Pootie. It's Shoplift the Pootie. Shop- yeah. Shoplift the Pootie. He shoplifting the Pootie from a single mom. And I was like, what? That's not. Why wasn't that in any music so, montage? <laughs> that was funny. Uh, the this is embarrassing thing. How is that not a meme? When he's quitting oh my God. and he says, who's coming with me? And he's holding up the goldfish and they have the, they shoot him like it's an empowering scene. Mm-hmm. They shoot him like from below. So he looks so grand and he's just by himself. And he says, this is embarrassing. I was like, how is that not a meme? It's a famous person. And the words are, this is embarrassing. 
Come I, on, internet. I, I thought that you were going to go with the uh, the yelling scene of him on the phone trying to save clients and him saying, I'm Mr. Black People. So oh that my was a tough Oh, my one. God. Oh, my God. Out of context, it's like, oh, what? Uh, yeah. and in context, it's like, oh, uh, what? I know. All bad. Yes. I well, thought you were going to say the scene where he goes, it's the, Tom Cruise's best delivered line in the whole thing is when he's like, I'm not going to freak out. Oh, yeah. And be like, it's so Tom Cruise. Right. It's like before that became the Tom Cruise thing to do. Yes. It's it's like when yes. Seth Rogen does his laugh because he knows like people just want to hear like, mm-hmm. Ugh. But Tom Cruise wasn't really known for doing that yet. No. But he was like, all right, I'm going to put one of these in there. My thing, though, that I think is like the best Tom Cruise yelling scene is in, I think it's in the bathroom when he's talking to Rod. And Rod's just like yelling all these things at him and demanding all these things. And he knows that he's like, well, this is the only fucking person I have left in the world. So he's just yelling fine the whole time. You know what I'm talking about? When he's like, fine, fine. And Rod, it becomes like Rod's basically talking to himself. And Jerry's on the, like like 20 feet away from just screaming fine and freaking out. It's a good movie for uh, for freaking out. Best part of the, the show me the money scene, though, is not – I mean, the back and forth is classic and iconic and everything, but it's just so funny that he's trying to – he's, like, desperately trying to save all of his clients, and he doesn't get to because he's, like, stuck on the phone with a fucking, like, 33-year-old receiver from the Cardinals – who's like a wife guy, and that's the only thing he ends up with. Hilarious. That's the I, I also thought it was that's funny the that they f- they, what he ends up with, hold on, you can't just let him get away okay. with that. What he ends up with, DJ, is the first meaningful relationship mm. he's ever had in his life. Deep. This movie is about men becoming friends and the women whose lives they fuck up along the way. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the women who get to watch. Yeah. <laughs> the real contract extension is the friends we made along the way. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, no, the um, the the scene where he's trying to save all his clients, I just couldn't stop thinking about, like, who gets fired and then just, like, gets allowed to stay in their office, their office. all day. I said this. Same thing. And then when he does leave, he takes one box and he's leaving a clear office that has stuff in it still. Yes. I'm like, Tons you've been working here for, you started this company. What, what about the rest of your stuff? And if you're going to send somebody for it, why even take a box? This yeah, feels right. very performative. Yes. Like, I'm being fired. Like, just go, get out and then have somebody pack up your. But they had to do that in order to do, this is a, like, as types of scenes in movies go, I think one of my favorite is agent storms back into the office determined to do something like Mm. if you've ever seen the the program entourage it's about half of the scenes in the show ari receives some bad news and it's always the same thing they start playing like a rolling Stones song and he's just like laser focused walks back in somebody on the way in is like oh hi it's good and he like blows past them and he's barking where's so and so i'll be in my office don't let anybody go in and it's the same fucking thing Every time. I think in this mm. movie, I think this one, they play, uh, they play like a Fleetwood Mac song and he just Your storms brain in just there. goes to the music. It's, a, it's, a, Always. it's an all encompassing thing. No, no, it's, it's good. I'm learning to like pay attention to more stuff because <laughs> I have ADD. So my whole life I've just been like, I half watched that. That counts. And now I'm getting older. You know, they say the game slows down. <laughs> so I'm like watching things and I'm like, oh. Oh, that is a good looking shot. Oh, that music does the I'm uh dumb, but I'm I'm that's the, I've got time to fix it. That's the way I am I've realized with um like if you're talking about songs with somebody and they're like, Yeah, but isn't this line so good? And I'm like, ah, I fucking never hear the words. I need to <laughs> oh, listen that's to all the words. I hear. I know the words to every song I've ever heard, whether I want to or not. Very cool. It's music in this in this completely movie, by unmarketable the way. talent to know the words <laughs> to every song music in this movie is done by i forget which heart sister but the w- one of the wilsons from heart so this movie spared no expense oh uh, yeah huh i mean a lot of stars this is peak i want to say peak kuba gooding jr he crushes did he win an award he won this? he won best uh, yeah, best supporting he... actor was very good in this he was a, a he crushed every scene that he was in he was lip nicky did also yeah. uh drew bledsoe big supporting so role. much so drew many Bled- drew bledsoe every scenes. time they needed an example mm-hmm. of like mm. we got the big guns for this movie they <laughs> always showed drew bledsoe which i mean he was like the highest paid quarterback in the nfl but damn if only they oh my god did you that's like one of those things that put 
you in the time period the movie happened because it wasn't that long ago, but it was existentially a long time ago, <laughs> the year that uh, Jerry Maguire was made. When he said, I feel like Clarence Thomas after sexually harassing his employee. And it was like, oh, he's not just pulling a reference. That was the... Hmm. Okay, that was the first time that people were like, you cannot do that to women at work. It, it's, it's a very short history, sexual harassment. It hasn't, uh, I mean, it's been happening for right, right. It hasn't been Wasn't something on... we knew what to call it. Right, like, oh, I'm not allowed to time. do this, huh? I feel like Maybe I'm the, the one other guy in the, the world first... who's ever done this before. And <laughs> the you're like, first no, recorded no. record of yes. acknowledging that sexual uh, harassing yes. an employee is not okay. Holy yeah. Jerry I feel Maguire, like I'm that one guy who one time did this famously, also, but not most men. Speaking of at the time references, uh, one of the kids coming up to Rod Tidwell and asking, "Are you Hootie?" Still slaps, but I'm sure that yes. that one was a banger back in the yeah, day. Yeah, dude. Oh, that the was the entire yeah. theater probably went nuts. I remember over people that very, joke. Very good. This is like dumb, but I remember people would yell, "No, I am not Hootie." That was like a classic line. Really? Quote? Yeah, people would just yell. Yeah. Like, You're, maybe the people you hung out with. No, like, like honestly, at I school, know. like, that was like a funny line. Like, no, I am yeah, not Hootie. And camp. I'm like, I don't get yeah. it if it's like Who wouldn't know a white second grader saying, yeah. no, I am not Hootie. What do you think about, like, the uh, the relationship dynamic between Jerry Maguire and uh, Renee, Z Renee Zellweger? Because. See, we all have trouble. We're all going to stumble over that speed bump. Because, like, she manipulates him into the relationship, and it's not acknowledged until, like, the end of the movie. But she acknowledges it. She does acknowledge it. At the same time, Which he I clearly wants to just be dad to somebody else's kid way more than he likes her. That's true. I, I mean, like, I think that we we are uh, – there. it's planted that there are – issues with Jerry Maguire's relationship history as you see That's on his bachelor party video what a weird like we what get a it weird video yeah. to show at a guy's bachelor party all his exes also, being like this guy kind of sucks that's what you get from also, Bob Sugar though not to woman the situation by understanding the emotions of him too deeply but it's like they all were saying opposite they were all like he can't be alone and he has intimacy issues which is like you would think that they would mean like com if he can't be alone you're for, yeah, you're missing the part where it's like he can't be alone but he also can't be with the same too close person to and it's it, i don't know it was very weird and then it also felt like he never really dis did his, does he end up disproving that he can't be alone no because there's a part where renee zellweger is like you need to be alone you should do this alone and he was like want to go get dinner and she's like yeah that's what i was thinking same page and it's like you guys are thinking there's a, on the same there's page a lot well no can't they, be alone they were they like the, the point was that she knew that he couldn't be alone and she kept saying alone so oh, that he yeah, would ask yeah, her yeah, out yeah. but uh -huh. but as soon as she does try to break it off like she's like hey this marriage is kind of a sham mm. he's alone for like two days and he's then he's like oh yeah i actually love you and let's make this work I so it's never it. actually proven that he can be alone yeah, yeah. I, he doesn't really break the cycle. No. He kind of just, uh, you know, puts it in pen. There's there's a lot of things they keep going back to in this movie that like I'm not sure need to be there. That's one of them. And the other thing is um, the they keep doing like the cutaways to his idol. Oh, oh my god! Yeah. And I'm like, oh my! It, I, it's I, his mentor, yeah. and it was supposed to be fun nugget of um, I didn't I I read the Wikipedia because I wasn't sure if I paid enough attention to the movie. The guy who was supposed to be cast in that role was the director of the film that inspired What's-His-Face to make this movie. Oh. And so he wanted it to be that guy, and then that guy died. And then I looked up who this guy was because I was like, that guy's got a – no offense to him if he's still with us. And if he's not, may he rest in all peace. But uh, I was like, this guy's got to know somebody who's making the movie because he's just <laughs> – he would deliver his line. It, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it, like, cuts away to him. He's direct, like, down barrel almost as if you are, I assume, Jerry Maguire, and he is giving you advice. And he would just, like – it's kind of used throughout the film to move the plot along. And he, he says things, and he looks right off camera as soon as he's done delivering the line the same way I do when I'm like, was that it? Did we get it? Oh, right. I, I know Can I go? Yeah. It just was very like, so who is this guy? I looked him up and he was like the head of Sony Pictures. And I was like, oh, aha, okay, okay. that does make sense. Uh, he had very uh, Dear joint. Evan Hansen energy where it's like, today's going to be a great day. You're going to kick today's ass. I did ass. think of that. Yeah, that reminded me of that. Uh, how about Bonnie? Kick the eyes, though. 
How about Bonnie Hunt in this oh, movie? Because... Bonnie Hunt MVP. She Bonnie was... Hunt. Oh, okay. What? I mean, I think she's a drip in this movie. I think like her character is just like a drip. What, she's what a drippy to thing to say. I know that was yeah. I, I know she's she supposed to be that. She is a sister that knows exactly what's going to happen. She knows that there's a tiny chance it could work, and she also knows that because she knows there's a tiny chance it could work, her sister has a uh, is only focused on that tiny chance it could work. So she's not trying to get in her way. That's why over and over she's like only thing I'm going to say or like I'm not going to say anything else or I'm only going to ask one question and you know that she's like I know I should be telling her she can't but she's had so much pain in her life and I just want her to get a win and so she's like rooting for her while also being like no my favorite scene is when she's uh, the same scene where uh, Renee Zellweger is going to move and then Tom Cruise is like they're having that conversation and Bonnie's watching from the window and she's doing a play by play that's awesome we're getting the car the sister's like don't don't you do this, Jerry? No, get in the car. And it's it, great. I so thought she was I, great. I think. I think. No, I appreciate I'm, that. I'm, I think I'm that on her team here because I, I think that their you. relationship was was very solid, it. very solid between sisters. And she wasn't like she wasn't mean to Jerry. She was just like, hey, I'm the disapproving sister. She was pleasant enough. She, I don't know. She, she made eye contact while drinking a beer, and men find that to be very aggressive coming from a woman. <laughs> no, I mean my, my just read on it That's was anecdotal. that like it was judge that she was judgmental <laughs> and like kind of condescending to her sister. Which those can both be true though. Like you could do yeah. it because it's like all right, I can. This is how much approval big brother, I can give you for is, your own Does sake. that not exist? That dynamic between big brothers and little brothers of like I'm I did it before you. I know better type energy. I mean, Renee Zellweger and, and you know, all power to her. It's a fictional character, so I guess I don't really care if I tear her apart. There are times where you're like, you need to love yourself. <laughs> I hate to give you the advice that everybody gives to women, but it's like you need to slow down. You've got a lot going on. The last thing you need right now is to sleep with your boss and fall in love with him. And I get that that seems like the first thing you need, but I think the first thing you need is to, is to love yourself. First thing you need to do is get, to get off the floor house. of the airplane yeah. trying to listen to people in first yeah, class. Yeah, it just made her seem desperate. And you're like, you're beautiful. Yeah, she does I the know. classic. She does that classic post hookup move, which is uh, the next morning loudly yell that you love the oh person when they are the still fact, in the house. It's the least realistic thing. In that, that was movie, incredible. The fact that he he was listening in on it and had the right reaction. I don't. I mean, I believe in love, and oh, I hope that there's love at first sight, and everybody's got a soulmate. Yada yada yada. If I slept with an employee, and then the next day they were loudly exclaiming to their sister defiantly, and you know what? I don't care. I love him. I don't care. I love him. And just going on and on about what she loves about him. If I had heard somebody do that about me day one. When we have a relationship that's already going to be tricky because we're the only two people that work at this new company that we just formed because I just left the company I've always worked at, and you were an accounting, it's just an agent and an accountant, and you sleep with her, she's already trying to do a job that isn't hers, and raise a kid on her own. Now you're going to grab her boob the first time you kiss Yo, her. Yes. Very weird move. Yes. Very weird move. Very Straight second grade to have your hand go directly to her boob. After Kelly Preston, too, it's like you get, and then now you think that's how you doesn't make a difference point is it's already complicated she's telling her sister she's in love with you and then you just come up behind her and kiss her on her neck and say good morning that is not how that would go at the most stressful time in your life not to mention the fact that we've we're led to believe that he may have commitment issues he may have no, commitment are issues we led to believe that? i mean the montage of 80 girlfriends no. telling him that All there's hot. something wrong with All him beautiful. lucy lou is one of them uh, um, another, I know we disagree on Bonnie Hunt, but I hope that we agree on the Greek chorus of women being a, a fantastic oh, device yeah. used. <laughs> uh, the divorce, divorce the, club, whatever, yeah. first wives club. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Uh, also Very incredible. Good. If we're talking about uh, weird Tom Cruise moves. Uh, like half undressing her at the, on the front doorstep of I their mean, first date when she ripping lives. her drops off. Yeah, and when she lives with her almost infant child and sister, <laughs> weird hmm. move on the doorstep. How old was Lip Nikki here? I mean, like four ish. That's a question for five. a later time. But yes, on that porch scene, he so he breaks that was her so dress. Weird. Which seemed like a nice dress, and you gotta assume she's not made of money because, like I said, she was an accountant at well, an she's agency, and then she quit her job, yes. and she's living at her sister's house. 
You, he breaks her dress. Then he's like, I can fix it. And then where does he go? I, he like magic question. mics downstairs. Mm. And there's and some moaning a, a little face, bit. Yes. She makes a face that indicates she's enjoying it. But he's not down there long no. enough. And then he's back up. I mean, just to, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I've never met a guy who can get it done that quickly. Standing <laughs> up. Insane. The angle doesn't make well, any sense. that would help explain why she loves him in the, after the first I mean, night. If, if that is the case, she's bringing exactly the right energy. Uh, and I take back all criticism that I levied her way before. But then he comes up and he ties him behind her neck, which, by the way, why would he know how to do that? And why would he know how to do that before she would go, oh, look, I can just tie them. It's a halter top. Why is he like, hold on, I'm going to fix this, but not until I fix that. He has very First, interesting. I'll do your button, then I'll do the strings. It was very weird. I did not understand it. That and was it, quite and, possibly the weirdest like intimacy yeah. scene that I've seen oh, in yeah. movie in quite some mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. Very interesting bedside manner out of him too. That what the, was when she opened the door and he was standing there and yeah. she closed. Well, the I don't door think that and... she was prepared to see him. It was like a, in that right. state, and she needed I another mean, second. They rarely kind of was... like hammer home that like Jerry's a real big deal to yes. to her. That like man. How, how, how is this happening for her? Oh, my God, her luck. When in reality, it's like, man, like, this is a person who is, I don't know if this term was around yet, but, like, Jerry Maguire was spiraling <laughs> yes. constantly leading oh up God. to their, I like, was like, he, he is, uh, he's manic. I was like, he is going from, like, I have the best idea in the world to, like, oh, my God, what have I done? To, like, oh, my God, I'm in love. To, oh, no, she said she loved me. And he's just like, Whoo. On the I subject like, of the, I like that they didn't make him drunk on when he wrote his uh i was like he's not on drugs you yeah. know they, they don't show him doing any drugs or any uh drinking at all they blame it on two pieces of bad pizza he said he yeah, like, couldn't sleep why do you think it's because the nfl is clearly it like signed off on this movie because they used like the real cardinals logo mm -hmm. they used the real nfl shield like mm -hmm. half of the nfl like players right so there must have been in on it maybe because i was like wait but how could they have done that once i realized the nfl was in on it i'm like it's weird that they let there be a guy with a concussion that sparked this whole thing for tom cruise and then i was like oh he was a hockey player mm -hmm. sneaky progressive I movie, he was a hockey player uh as it as it comes to like head injury awareness in sports because nobody really... and female athlete representation Yo, the... that montage at the beginning True. i'm like yeah. oh they hit a girl before they normally hit a girl but when they hit a girl did you notice how they did it though they were they, they I read it as like they were kind of projecting that 90s expectation of sexism from the audience where they're like this kid like check out all these young hotshot you, athletes. You mean the this one the, throws 90 miles an hour mm -hmm, or 95 mm -hmm. miles an hour. This one has a slap shot that'll knock your socks off. Wondering what she's doing here? She had a successful lawsuit, so she's important. And I'm oh, like, I didn't even, I wasn't listening. Oh Damn, yeah, it really was they that say, bad. They say like Sick. her lawsuit is going to <laughs> like cool. change the future of That's sports, which is like super cool. Good lawsuit. Guess what? It didn't because the future looks kind of similar. <laughs> they were. They, they they I guess she, you know, she tried her hardest. She gave it the old college try. Uh, yeah. My favorite device in this movie is that whenever uh, Jerry's in like dire straits. He wears the worst pair of gas station sunglasses you've ever seen in your life. Oh my god! Oh my god! It is they're horrible. Real bad. Anytime, really bad. And anytime he's so in, so many. Like, he looks like a parody of Tom Cruise. He looks like yes. he's gonna come sliding around the corner in just socks and a shirt or whatever. <laughs> uh, you met Pete That's mentioned him, right? the the mission statement. I feel very bad for him because I think he that was like the first mission statement anybody had ever actually read. And it ruined his. Yeah, fucking why life. did like, everybody read yeah, it? If there was a mission statement it. in my mailbox, I'd be like, "Get this!" Especially out one that was twenty-five right. pages. He wrote Jeez, this extremely please. long mission statement. Literally, everybody read it and had this like big opinion about it. Yeah. Also, he's not a writer; he's an agent. Like he he was going through an episode late at night. Uh, was on cocaine. <laughs> Let's just all yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's what you do. Okay. You do coke and you say, I got a business idea. Like, and then the next morning you wake up and you have the same moment he had where he was like, oh, what have I done? Like the realistic ending there would have been him not getting fired for like disrupting the uh, the industry. It would have been him getting fired for just like writing absolutely unintelligible drivel for like. 25 you pages. You work here for and, how long? You saying, know how to make a pitch meeting. You right. got an idea? Bring it to the ideas, people. You don't just distribute that. What is this? It's not a democracy. It's a company. That's right. Uh, I, yeah. I, I don't... Capitalism always wins. I figured there's going it to does. be um, 
I mean, this was pre this was pre Sam Bradford that all this uh, draft stuff happened. So you they, they were like nine eleven, and there are good for... points to be made about that. But being pre Sam no. Bradford is even funnier. That's more of a, a turning point in my life. Yeah, was Sam Bradford? You know, era. like the the, the post uh, massive contracts for high draft yeah. picks, and they're negotiating them leading up to it. And there would be the thing crazy security days, at the airport. Yeah, I get it. There'd be the few uh, days before the draft. They'd be like this prospect and this team have agreed. So this player is going to go at this point and everything. So there were a lot of like things that happened that if you watch it now, you're like, Oh, that doesn't make sense. But they actually did back then. What does not make sense is the contract situation with Rod Tidwell, where at the end of the movie, they have Rod Tidwell on a talk show to reveal to him. Congratulations. (laughs) Your team wants to give you a contract. And there's no like question of like, like well, how did you get this? And how like <laughs> right. can I put can I show yeah. it to my agent first? They just Is this a game show? Right. Why yeah. is this ha- am I being punked? Congratulations, you on? won. And then it's like, this is my career. I would be so I'd look immediately to my boss and be like, why am I finding out this way? Why is this what's happening? Yeah. Like what what's the communication situation what are we doing here? at this organization, Arizona Cardinals? Who doesn't make a lot of sense? Also also, I think it's hilarious that the like the sports crux of this movie, the sports peak of this sports movie, is that Rod Tidwell catches one touchdown on Monday Night Football and it changes. It gets hurt. It gets hurt, it gets hurt. and then the entire NFL and organization changes the entire way that they think about him. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. We were talking before. Uh, Glenn Fry in the hallway when he's walking through after the game. He plays the general manager. And he had previously told Jerry, like, fuck off, Jerry. Like, he's not getting the contract. He's too short. I want Calvin Johnson, all this type of shit. And he walks in and he's like, Jerry, you know, like, you're right. And what does he, he mouths to him like, he's you have to pay me pay now. Me, yeah. And he says, he's like, I know. <laughs> he scored a touchdown. <laughs> when you're wrong, you know, look, I was sense. wrong. He's, he, he did score a touchdown. And the initial offer was four by ten. It was four years, $10 million. Yeah. Then the offer that they had made, the one offer that they made to Rod, there's no negotiation. There's just four. one offer, and it's three by, like, $1.7 mm-hmm. And then the final offer, which is presented on a game show, uh, is <laughs> four years and $11 million. So they jumped $10 million per year. It's just like watching After Dealer one no touchdown. Deal. When you know you know, yeah, Jerry, it was a really good touch. He jumped a lot higher than I thought he could. <laughs> I mean, and immediately got hurt. <laughs> and then everybody wanted to talk to him. And it was like, okay, is the message of this movie to, if your star power is struggling, fake an injury, and then triumphantly come back from it? Oh, it doesn't. I mean, he was out for. He was out that's for That's the while. most ridiculous. He was out for like four minutes comes to mm, this is pre pre protocol pre Sam Bradford too pre, also like, all these things pre um pre like way to follow the uh the, the process if you're an announcer because the Monday night football crew oh one of them was like oh the medical crew is out there to revive him on the field and it's yeah, like geez. oh my god did you actually did you that he's see dead me? Did you see that medical doctor's uh, methodology? He just leaned over him and went, clapped. Yeah. <laughs> and he clapped and he woke up. And yeah. I was like, what? In fairness, is, that's how they used this? to treat con- up, concussions. Faker. I mean, honestly, I can't tell if it's real or if it, you know, if we've come that far. He's like, oh, man, it's it sure stinks that Rod's really hurt because we're going to get ice cream after the game. <laughs> <laughs> Al Michaels, by the way, very young in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Very young, which just made me think of that. Uh, did you read that article of the guy defending uh, Tom Brenneman? And he wrote an article about how he's being attacked and how he deserves to have a job. In the in the article, he wrote a line that was like, uh, play-by-play broadcasters uh, famously have a limited window in order yes. to have their career. And I'm like, are you kidding? Al Michaels in this movie? <laughs> he's been doing this job for so long. He was on the miracle call. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. But he's a limited window. Also. Tom Brenneman's dad did that job for like 40 yes. years. Where do you get off saying that there's a limited window? Um, I'm a lady. I got a week to get back on TV. Or I'm done. <laughs> ruined one of the uh one of the weirdest things in this movie is that like about 10 minutes before it ends they just decide that uh rod's brother has one leg and they decide to uh refer to it like six times yeah they, they lean into that yeah that becomes like, oh, wow i that wonder so, so airy spears arm. is who we're talking about right i think Mad so TV? yes Isn't yeah and uh he uh lost his leg in a bass fishing accident 
What? Need more details on that. It's a red herring. What? It's supposed to get you thinking all sorts of. So you're like, ooh, he was behind it the whole time. Or wait, who's behind? Is there? I don't know what this movie's about. Wait, so if, if Rod's brother lost his leg in a bass fishing accident, Rod's definitely not getting his contract because so his the G, the family runs genes. In the family. Yeah. It's like the Justin Fields thing where there were it people in Justin Fields' sense. family who uh, yeah. were epileptic, and he had to like disclose. He told teams that something I like mean, that. I know we are very confused about what is a HIPAA violation, but that does a little bit feel like him. I shouldn't know that about a famous athlete's sibling. He gets like the headline though when before Rod gets played off at the game show when he's accepting his award. Oh, one yeah. of like the first people he thanks is he's like, and look, it's like the SNL character. He's like, you're rocking one leg. You mean everything to me. At TV. That's very disrespectful. It's like if I called the Eagles the Bee Gees. No, no, no. I was saying there's the a uh, Amy Poehler character oh. who would go on like dating shows or whatever. And her thing was that she had one leg and would not stop talking about how she oh had one God. leg. Oh, my God. Remember that? You just like unhooked a memory from my brain. Yeah. I do remember that. Like, but these I girls got nothing on me. Ago. I'm rocking one leg. And like everything she said would start with like, I got one leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, depressing, quick depressing moment. And then we'll move on from it. That Aries Spears shirt still uh, resonates today. Still a message we're trying to get across. Oh, yeah. What does it say? I don't remember, it, but it was something about cops correct. and shooting black people. It was oh. like, I'm a black guy, but I'm not a criminal. Please don't shoot me. And I was like, oh, fuck. Okay, yes. then. Yes. Oh, fuck. We still don't. We still need that shirt. Still works. Um, was Lip Nicky the original Tremblay? Or he was like the Tremblay of that time. Rem Which one's Tremblay? He was the kid in uh, He's Room. He's cute, but what's Room. he in? Room. Oh, and yeah. Everyone, I mean, and all very. The and all the NHL Now, TJ, I don't shows. know if you need to hear this. Very different films. Very yes. different Wait, feels now. here. Hold All on. Lip Nicky had to do was be cute, which honestly, and I'm not knocking him, it's a huge talent for a child to be able to act. I'm a, a adult, in air quotes, and I don't know how to do it. That being said, the easiest time to be cute is when you're little. I mean, all you got to do is just smile and say adult words. Mm. Um, like the phone conversation he has with Rod. I'm like, there's no way that a little kid would stay locked in listening to him and then answer in a quippy, funny way. He would forget that he was on the phone. He would throw it across the room. None of this makes sense. But all he has to do is just be like, these are my lines. And we're all like, oh, my God, those are your lines like he had this moment where he's like i gotta go to bed my mom's coming and then tom cruise is like where are you going he's like my mom's coming gotta go to bed it's the cutest thing i've ever heard in my life and all it was was the line that i had just heard moments ago <laughs> but he said it again in a little quieter and his voice cracked and i was like he does she is i just remember <sighs> i that was like he was an A-list. I don't think he was in many things. Oh, I'm, I'm going to show my ignorance here. He wasn't in many things after, right? But I, I do remember that. I don't know. When that I movie don't came know. out, it was like, stop the oh, presses. Yeah. Like, we are you know talking is, about though? this kid. He set the bar too high. If you get famous for being the cute kid, that must be so hard to be like, well, I'm only going to get uglier. I'm a kid. Yeah. And everybody was like, you're so valuable because you're so cute. And then he's like, okay, well, my face is going to get a little longer. And I'm going to go through that phase where I need braces. And so what happens then? Where is my value then? We all well, just saw him be he, too cute. Then he got jacked. Did he? He did? Yes, he got jacked. Oh, I think and I it's like this. the same the face. <laughs> yes, in the movie. Mm. Yes. In the Jerry Maguire sequel. He, he, <laughs> he gets really, the end? He gets really him at strong college? and Glenn Fry Swole. loves him. He's strong like a lime. That's my prototypical guy, <laughs> Jerry. Uh, yeah, Lip Nicky gets uh, quite ripped later on in life. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at him in this little leather jacket. Same face, right? It's weird. Yeah, don't look at the ripped Show picture, it. but look at him in the little leather jacket. <laughs> wow. Yeah, DJ, that looks like you when you take your shirt off. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The one, this when one. I take my shirt off, this it one. looks like... <laughs> that one, yes. That's what that's, uh, I was going to make A that little joke. boy in a suit. Yes, yeah. when I take my shirt off, it looks like Sorry, a little boy in a Sorry, I stepped on your joke, jacket. but I think technically it was mine. Great I minds. mean, that's what... Those, that's the exact... This one is the exact rack I had in high school. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, I had that same shirt, and it looked exactly the She's same. She's pointing to the same picture of Lipnicki in a leather jacket. All of these no, pictures no. are the exact <laughs> same one. No, it's ripped. I mean, he's... he look, he's, Honestly, he looks good for, like... Uh, turned out as well yeah, as it could have. Right, exactly. Like you How look tall at, is he? You, you look at, like, like... I don't know what it is about him as a kid. You're like, oh, man, he's got a he's got a limited window here. Yeah. But he ended up being, mm -hmm. like, a pretty good-looking adult. So good for him. Against uh, all odds. 5'7". Yeah. We have to Ooh, hit hell the yeah. 
We have How tall are you, Pete? Five, you're six. taller than 5'7". No, I'm 5'6". Uh, no, you're not. I absolutely am. Can you answer a question for me I should know the answer to and please don't be offended by? Okay. Have we ever met in person? We, we sure have not. Right? No. I haven't met you in person. Crazy. That is wild. That's so crazy to me because you guys are like original internet friends. And so I feel like, like in that span of time area. we must have met. Yeah, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, but in my head, if I were quizzed on that, gun to my head, I'd be like, we might have. I feel like I know them, but yeah. it's crazy. Nope. And not to it's like always been digital to me. Not to like Cuomo thank you right now, but like the concept of internet friends is always kinda weird to me. But I like it's legitimately not Katie, weird like, anymore. I think like we both like consider you like like I've like vented about shit to you and like thrown. Oh yeah, like, I my remember I was at, at a you. hotel in somewhere and I was like, Okay, I'm just gonna vent to DJ right now. <laughs> yeah, like we've and had, you're like, his. Yeah. We've unloaded shit. That's what yeah, dude, that's what IRL friends do. All right, appreciate you. Um, we have to talk about the uh, dueling, massive, I want this to be the defining line of the movie scene, okay. which is you complete me and you have me at hello. When I said earlier, every time I watch this movie, I've remembered like the first three minutes and then forget everything after. Every mm -hmm. time I get to that scene, I'm like, these are both in this same scene? Yeah, yeah. crazy. That is a... That is a Meat pound for to the pound, point that where, huge like, scene. back to back. Not yes, even, like, yes, not even same scene, just you, back to you back. You complete lines. me. Shut the fuck up. You <laughs> yeah. have me at hello. I win, and like like balloons it's... come down. It's like Zell Wigger, <laughs> Zell <Zoe Wigger. laughs> Yeah, they honestly. <laughs> fuck like, you, Jerry. Nice try. A good SNL skit would like that's a pissing match of them just oh, trying yeah. to like be the star of that scene, and they should have had the divorce wives club like pick sides. They should have been like, ooh, I'm I a feel like here. The divorce <laughs> wives <Obviously>. club, <laughs> the the restraint they have in that scene, because think about it. These are a bunch of women who thought they had love and then they're now dealing, they meet to basically talk about it. By the way, Renee Zellweger's speech where she's like, you know, I've listened to your guys' sob stories for years. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe you're right. And the women are like, that's not what we said. And she's also, like, maybe men are the worst, but I still love the worst or whatever dumb thing she says and none of those women say anything they should be like listen bitch in 20 years <laughs> oh, wow. come back to this room come back to this room and then tell me that you still like to that's why we're so this is your sob story so that's restraint number one then restraint number two is that tom motherfucking cruise walks in and says I'm here to see my wife or whatever he says because he can't see her because she's bent down picking up garbage that she dropped on the floor and she stands up with her like puckery mouth and she's like what and then they have that scene where they trade like rom-com elite level a god tier rom-com line yes in front of these divorced single <laughs> Best women part. Best and part. none of them are just straight up finger blasting like, themselves. <laughs> none of them are like, they are seeing like Pink Floyd live in their heyday right in front of them, the performance of a lifetime. And they're all just like looking back and forth like it's a tennis match. Like get into it guys. It's never, you're never gonna see right. love up close like this. It's a this front is... row seat and it, th yeah. they either gotta go one way or the other. They, got, they can't be like idly sitting by. They either have to be like, Oh fuck you! Yeah, yeah. Like I'm like the divorced bitter wife. Like I don't need this. I come get here to vent. Room. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, I like to get a room side. Right. <laughs> it's either that what you said, or it's either like fuck you. I don't need this right now. I'm here to vent. I could see that being like, especially like given the cliches that were thrown around in in this movie. Uh, I could see like one of them just getting up and like trying to pull Jerry away. And then other ones being like, no, 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 you are oh, yeah. done. You think those women would not meddle in that yeah, situation? Right. Oh, you, no, no, they all keep their done. hands inside the vehicle is the least believable thing. That they're all just like, I'm a, we should see how this plays out. You're we'll right. talk about it next meeting. God. I do love them, though. I, 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 I love that group so much. And I love that we just dissected that scene like that. That was wonderful. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Uh, final Jerry Maguire thoughts. Do we like it? Do we not like it? I did, you know, all of its flaws, I do like it. Yeah, it's a, I, great, it's a really good movie. <laughs> I do like it. I think it's I think it's not an excellent movie, but I don't say that in like a disparaging way. I think that some of it maybe hasn't aged perfectly, but it's anything in the 90s. This and it's a ridiculous age is premise. probably better than a lot of things. We didn't 90s. mention Regina King at all yet, I know. and I feel like that's not fair. We need to definitely say well, that especially she's mentioned, that there's a we wife guy. We mentioned wife guy, and obviously... Mm -hmm. Would you agree he's mm -hmm. a wife guy? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he seems like a wife guy. Yeah. To me. He yeah. seems like a wife yeah. guy. He seems like the best kind of wife guy. Like he, an authentic he, wife guy. He loves his wife, and he also like really wants everybody that he knows to love their wife, too. Yeah, he's so. like a very good guy. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's like, all right. But that was back when it was like, ooh, this loud athlete must be a problem child. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. man, he is actually like it did feel helping like they Jerry made a with couple... a lot of shit. It made a couple points that felt a little ahead of their time, but also not, you know? It's like it, it, it felt like, like it one did step an forward, okay two job. Steps back. Yeah, yeah. It holds up better than many old, especially sports uh, movies, but it the, it just, I don't know. I think it was good. I think, what does it have on it's Rotten It's an 84, and it's got a 70, let's check. It's a 79 audience score. That might and actually so be more is, surprising. The tomato The meter. 84 is the, is the critics? Yeah. And who, how do you qualify for, is it like a blue check mark on, uh, how Nobody does that work? Would. I know that people do know, but I contend nobody knows because I don't know. So just what you're saying is you don't. I know I don't okay. know, yeah. and I don't my think world view knows. I know it's harder must to say that everyone's. part out loud. I'm surprised yes. that this movie has a higher critic score than a uh, audience score. Audience score, me too, because I bet audience score takes nostalgia into into account. <laughs> I like the you can look back heart. at it. <laughs> I, but I also think that like rom coms typically lend themselves better to like audiences than than uh, critics. I guess, but hmm, you know. yeah. As far no, as rom coms go, this what I think that's why that? I, I like it. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what I like about this movie is that it. The reason I like it is because for a rom com, it's like how I feel about Crazy Stupid Love. It's, I'm like for a rom com, it's a prestige yes. rom, -com. rom com. Like it yeah. is a yeah. actually good film that happens to be a rom. -com. I mean, rom coms. The scene. Don't get no, nominated. I was gonna say rom coms don't get nominated for best picture. Right. And yeah. This this was. But they're cash cows, aren't they, usually? Oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't that usually oh, what yeah. a rom comes for? Yeah. That's why audience appeal makes sense. There was a scene where there was a female reporter in the locker room, and Ooh. I don't know why they had her dressed mm. in, like, a sensible separate, but she looked like a like – she was dressed like Diane Sawyer, and she, like, dropped the microphone and got very uncomfortable because the men in the locker room were naked. And the I was like, was that's – was very close to a penis. Yeah, but she she seemed super uncomfortable, and the player seemed super comfortable. And I was like, I don't know that that's necessarily the energy I would have. But then it was immediately next to a, a line that I liked, where you heard the reporter go, like, anyone else worth talking to? No, let's get out of here. And you saw how that affected Rod. And you were like, oh, that would really suck to hear them say, anyone else who matters? No, we'll leave without the, talking to you. So I get why the scene was there, but I just didn't. They dressed her like she had this bright blonde hair. She had on like a suit that has a skirt as the and that's it doesn't make sense i didn't understand the poor rod i didn't speaking like speaking of things that we didn't need the uh the ex-fiance being like just sticking around and being a dick for but no real just giving reason. him the finger all the yeah. time like not even the doing? finger the l she oh throws my God. Yeah, the l. loser an yeah l. she made an l calls him a loser <sighs> not cool like big she time really burn. Doesn't like being big time loser. burn for an r-rated movie she remind me of uh Stacy in Wayne's World, the ex-girlfriend, who's just oh, like yeah. in like a third of the scenes, and every time she it's like Stacy, get out of here, or something like that. What just, did this lady do for the NFL? I think she was she media relations. Yeah. It seems oh, she was media okay. relations because at some point later was, when they show her with Jay Moore, I was like, oh, this is one of my favorite tropes, which is when the villains uh, have sex with each other because it looked like they were sleeping together, but I don't know if they actually were. I don't think that Jay Moore was sleeping with, with anybody. anybody. I think that he's like, hey, You're the best, hey. Bro, remember that time you got laid? Who was there? Me. <laughs> Why? Because I'm your guy. And the guy's like, oh, okay. I mean, says, you weren't invited, but he that's, said, that's okay. my job is to remember the names of skanks that you yeah, bang on the road. And I was like, I'm pretty Thank sure you, yeah, that's like, not freezing. your job. Yeah. Well, I Jay Moore think you know, thinks it is, so. Yeah, you have a weird uh, weird thinking of what an agent's job is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I like the movie. I think it's I think it's very good. I think I mean I don't know. Thanks aside, I like the movie. Yes. Yeah. How do we uh like state of play? Which Not for me. Katie, had you you hadn't heard of it? Had you never had you... heard of it? Had never heard of it, was shocked by how many famous people were in it. It's an unbelievable cast. Helen Mirren didn't even get a mention in your intro. Oh, to this. I know. I forgot. I have to mention, speaking of not getting a mention, uh Oh right. Cush, uh, Cushman. Cushman, the the star quarterback in uh in Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. His dad is played by Bo Bridges. A yes, he is. Quite established actor, and I think that he had a prominent role in this movie, and he was pretty good in Says this movie. Says a racist line. 
Yes, quite very racist. racist. Also, Confusedly drinks a racist. very a very thin Bloody Mary in the middle of the day. That Bloody Mary does not look cloudy at all. <laughs> it's got a lot of vodka in it. It looked like a cranberry no, juice. That, no, that was a what does he call it? Uh, like a bloody beer or something? Isn't that what he calls yeah, it? Just, didn't it have sure. like a clamato? I saw the clamato juice. I don't know. I didn't take that many it notes. A, I, I just thought it was he a bloody. Said mirror. Something he, was, he was like, it's just. I I think he says it's just like a beer topped with tomato juice. Yeah. And Jerry's That's like, weird. I I just need to to see your son, mm. please. Well, to kids, save my life. this is what ADD looks like. You That's go besides, in and out of movies. Beside you miss the point. Entire lines. Uh, Bo Bridges, not credited in this movie. So weird. No way. Does not have a credit. Literally, I went to the IMDb, uncredited. I checked the uh, the credits, not there. They have like romanticized kissing woman at airport credited. Oh, there was one that yeah, it was like a uh, idealized lady. Idealized in kissing <laughs> wife. What the hell? Idealized is this kissing part? wife is credited oh in this God. movie, but Bo Bridges so somehow not. What do you think happened? I have no idea. Is there this like a this maybe should... he improvised the racist line and they were like, "Ooh, I uh, can't yeah. give you this credit." <laughs> this has like Taylor's version energy, where she just kind of like erases a lot of like the past collaborators. Yes, they made the movie and they're like, "Something happens with Bo Bridges." We don't like. Okay, this is Cameron's version. It's Jerry Maguire and no Bo Bridges. Okay, bye bye. State of play. Were we state of play time? <sighs> yes, I. Uh... I'm also on TV. Wouldn't this be where you do an ad read? No, it's a Patreon episode. This is so Patreon. We don't have, uh-huh. we have ad reads. Ad reads would never. Uh-huh. Plus, like, if there were, though, and if you're listening and you'd like this to. No, never. We would have forgot. <laughs> you can plug the Patreon. You should. Pl- well, you'd be plugging the Patreon for the Patreons. Which is the seems. only time we remember to oh, tell. Oh, hey, guys who already listeners. pay for this, don't stop paying for this. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Thank that you. That kind of a thing. Hell Stay yeah. subscribed. Keep doing what you're doing. Set it on auto pay and then forget about it. Hell yeah. Love that idea. Um,. Mm-hmm. You were saying I, you agree with me. I agree with you because I was Thank not you. crazy about this one. Uh, wasn't crazy about it. There is a twist, uh, and I would say that it's a good p- political thriller, but it's not memorable. I I mostly agree with that. I mean, I, I thought it was I thought it was good and fine, but I'm not going to go rewatch State of Play. Mm-hmm. And if I do, like with Jerry Maguire, when I rewatch it, I'll say, "Oh, I forgot what happens in this movie." If I rewatched State of Play in ten years. I don't think I would know until after the movie that I had even seen it before. Yeah, like I, it, it's possible that. Oh yeah. I just oh forget yeah. This That's entirely. one of those movies you could get halfway through and go, "Oh, I have seen this." Here's my biggest. They do something that you're like, "Oh, I hated that the first time I saw it," and that's the only part I remember. <laughs> Here's my biggest question: Why is it called State of Play? Is that just like an, an action movie great thing? Really they do? good Where question. Just, like, take I a didn't thing even that sounds get like a name. That, no, I. What bothered me the most about this movie is how much plot is uh, occurs during hushed conversations that they just tell each other the plot instead of like doing a lot of it so it's i don't know it might have just been the specific brand of high that i was when i watched it but it just felt like they were always like you know i've been investigating for years to look at these companies and to see and i'm like i didn't actually know that but i did you just told me i did appreciate that about this movie it holds your hand because i yes it makes sure you know what they're trying to say also have add so i especially Mm -hmm. with like thrillers i know that at some point there's a good chance i'm gonna cross-reference it with wikipedia because i just need to make sure i yeah see here's my problem when i see a movie at this age now when i see a movie holding my hand i give it less of my attention i'm like oh you're gonna let me wander off then i'm gonna wander off i'm not gonna pay full attention to your movies that's why state of play lost that's why i like the um that's why i like the peyton and eli thing the stream that they do that makes me watch i I, I was like oh shit i'm going there that makes me watch the game because they don't reference the game at all. So it's like, if you yeah. want to actually know what's going on in the game, you have to actually watch this. And I'm like, oh, this mm-hmm. is what watching sports is like. And it's not mm-hmm. just going on my computer or phone or something. Well, that, is a, for loud that is a good point, though. Like, every part of the plot progressing in this movie, you Spell find out. out about because they're telling you. Yes. Like, yes. it doesn't actually happen from you watching yes. the movie. You don't see you can, Russell Crowe have sex with the lady eyes. from House of Cards, but you <laughs> yeah, know that they right. did, and you know that before that they were friends and they yes. were hoping to still be friends, but yet every scene they do together, they're staring at each other's lips and talking so closely that I'm like, at least one of you does want to fuck again. Yes. I'm not sure which. You're both smoldering, but one of you's still trying to fuck. It is often Robin Wright. I would contend. Yeah, There's I mean, like, she 
There's a lot of yes. she'll just like Throws grab him heat. by the shirt and be mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. "Why aren't we currently fucking?" And there's also like the 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 idea that like she's probably won some revenge. She just found out that her husband cheated on her. Yeah. So like, yeah. but with his friend roommate, that is, I don't know. Doesn't I mean, there's no right. rules once you find out that piece of news. I guess. Yeah. I mean, says you. You sound I mean, like you've slashed a couple tires in your life. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a, a gal who's thrown a couple pairs of sneakers big, out the Yeah, big right. Underwood energy big, over uh, here. Burning the uh, wardrobe on the front lawn. That's my Hell move. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, so that's true. You could watch this movie with your eyes closed and like not miss a beat because you'll just mm-hmm. listen to them tell you what's happening. Cool. Um, I think my biggest problem with, it's with this movie- It's a good podcast, I think, is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, movie is a very good podcast. Yeah. Uh, my biggest problem with this movie is that it immediately starts off with a woman getting pushed in front of a train, which is not the only. And Pete's not uh, Robin cool with Wright, that. Pete yeah. says, "Don't I, do that. That is not cool." Absolutely. Pete's it's like how the beginning of John not Wick the, when you're like, "You can't house do of that." Cards. Not the only House of Cards parallel: a woman being pushed in front of a yeah. train. Um, Said that right away. But uh, the this movie is largely about journalism, and the. The Washington Globe, the fake newspaper. Yeah. yeah. Their oh. first move oh. is to be like, oh, so uh, the the politician who's crying about the woman that he worked closely with, pushed in front of a train, died tragically. Oh, he's emotional. They must have been fucking. He the was movie definitely does that cheating. too, though. The movie, like everybody, is just like, I'm like, this guy's not allowed to be sad that this young woman when he's just announcing died? it. When he's like, hey, this person that worked with us, she was very good at her job. She tragically. And like he's like choking up his work, and the camera like starts like zooming in on his face, and it's like they're adding sweat to him, and like they're playing mm. frantic music, and I'm like, no, that's okay. He should be <laughs> right. crying. He should be upset. There's no, there's no funny business they here. They have like the people from Eight Mile like standing around. Like, he's you choking. were wrong. He's I, there was that, so, so much funny. That's business what here. makes me mad. It's that, that they too. were right at the beginning. First thing I wrote down in my phone, because I said it out loud in the room and my boyfriend looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, no, I think this is going to become the central question of this movie. And I'm glad I wrote it down. First, I have uh, Cal is a lame name for a journalist. I'm just being transparent. <laughs> then I have which Everyone's came first, this, this or House of Cards. And then the next thing is, is Ben Affleck a bad actor or is Ooh. his character a bad liar? I couldn't tell what was being communicated to me. At the, I'm like, he's either crushing acting like a guy who sucks at lying or he's a bad actor. And I think he was crushing looking like a guy who's bad at lying. But then I'm like, well, then it's too heavy handed. He should have been a better liar then so that I didn't so foretell twist, really. right. the entire plot. I hate any movie that's like, we're going to make you think this guy did it and then we're going to pivot hard the other way and then it's going to end up right back where you so thought it was. Initially, it's a law and order. Initially, I thought that Rachel McAdams, I was like, so Rachel McAdams is a journalist in this. She only has like two or three roles. She's a blogger. That she just does blogger multiple journalist. times. So right. she does. she's a similar character that she plays in Spotlight. And she also does, a she, she frequently does movies about time traveling people that she's in love with. And I was like, yo, That's Rachel, true, mix it up. And then I was like, well, Ben Affleck plays like a shitty husband who potentially cheated and or killed somebody in every movie. I mean, like, did, weren't there? I mean, Gone don't Girl concern lives? yourself with the logic of this, but I'm just going to say it as a sentence because I have to speak my truth. That's why I'm here. Ben Affleck is my Captain America. Hell yes. Oh, yeah. Ben Affleck, I look at and I'm like, yeah, that's the guy in the way that's like it's the ideal because he's not perfect he's got a lot of problems but it's just still it's the boston him. in me that they say you can't take out of a girl where you just look at ben affleck and you're like good for james well i don't know if you know this about us but this podcast did affleck week earlier this year i did not know that about did, you and i apologize deeply. we did a deep dive on ben affleck and his work and his life and almost every episode we asked the question is ben affleck a good actor I don't think we say. ever came to a conclusion. Still tough to say. That's why Did it's... I ever tell you? I must have told you about when he came to ESPN to do, um, I think he was doing first take, and he came in and he smoked cigarettes. Hell yeah. yeah brother. He came in Inside? and he went into the, he went to the yeah. green room and he just started ripping butts and everybody was like, the energy was like they went in and they were like, um, Ben Affleck smoking cigarettes in the green room? And people were like, did anyone tell him he can't do that? And they were like, I'm not doing it. Like right. no one was yeah, going to go in yeah. and be like, hey, Mr. Affleck, he was just ripping him walking down the hallway. And I was like, yeah, okay. You're allowed to be that kind of asshole, I guess. It works for you somehow. 
It really does. That's exactly a move that I would predict Ben Affleck would pull. Love that. It's what I wanted. I wanted it. I wanted my reality confirmed, and boy, was it. This is stupid. And I was like, can I smoke in here? Can we start smoking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell hey, yeah. We're smoking in here. Uh, did you know? I learned this from the scene in which Jeff Daniels asks him, hey, were you stooping that lady who died? <laughs> At the beginning of the conversation, he says, okay, brass tacks. Were you having an affair? And I had the uh, captions up because I just mm -hmm. didn't turn them off. Do you know that it's brass tacks? Like as in T -A -C. the plural okay. of attack? <gasps> yeah. Oh, I did not. I, did. I have I'm always gonna been. I'm going to pretend I did because Pete did. Oh, really? So, yeah, no, yeah. I knew. Yeah. Yeah. So I that's thought it was a, it was like a tea tack. I thought it was like people threw a bunch of brass off of a ship because they were protesting the brass tax. I don't know. That's it feels like it was a brass tax, yeah. not a. So then, what is it? Brass tax being the things that hold things together. Me, is that the reference? I don't is it like know. No, 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 it's not, no. It's not. It's not tax as in like a thumbtack. It is. A, oh, it is tax. Oh no, like I'm sorry. It is. It is as in. God, DJ. Honestly, you just did what the movie did. You just did what the movie did. You just said it's not Ben Affleck. Oh wait, I'm kidding. It is. It oh wait, twist. it's not. Oh wait, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it was a twist. Uh, I was surprised. Real Mobius strip of a twist. I was surprised that you you mentioned it's called the 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 Globe. The Washington Globe is the paper. Yeah. Infuriating. He Same says font as the Post. Though. Yeah. And like the Boston Globe. He says at one point. He's like, did you see the Globe today? They're gonna, they're ripping me to shreds. And Mister, I will shut down production of a film for like four days because I won't wear a Yankees hat. Was willing to just throw the throw Globe. Throw such Boston Globe erasure out there. I was like, man, you know, there's other Globes. Th like, but there's only Snow one. Globes? There's only one the Globe. <laughs> At if you're, if you're from if you're Boston, yes. Yeah. But maybe that's why it rolled off the tongue for him. I bet he would be the one. I bet he was the one that said, call it the globe so I can just say the globe. Because when I see, because like instead, theory. it's like saying Kleenex instead of tissue. I bet he calls every paper the globe. <laughs> the globe. <laughs> I can and Affleck has no idea there. there's more than one paper. <laughs> He's just like the National Enquirer, yeah. like reporting about him and Julie. You see the fucking globe this morning? He sees what happened anything to journalism? Check out this globe. <laughs> he sees one. anything that folds <laughs> tabloid style? Weekly, he sees anything that folds tabloid style and calls it the Herald. He's he just, like, "Hey, uh, yeah. what Herald are you reading? Like this? this I'm this is a book. I'm reading a Any novel. Coffee is a dunks. You're like, oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, did you see the he sign? Books, the Herald. Did you see the? Uh, <laughs> what Herald are you reading? I just said that. <laughs> no, uh, but you books. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, you said I books. Said, I said yeah. Anything oh. that folds. Well, I thought oh, you were repeating like, DJ's joke. Oh no. Yeah, enough. I was like, thanks, buddy. Way, I love Welcome. this. <laughs> Love this so this much. Is what we Can do. I tell it now? Do I get a yeah, go go for it. Let's go. Go. Guys, what if he called books the Herald? That'd be Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my so God. funny. That's so hilarious funny. stuff. Very I'm good. Very down. good joke. Mm -hmm. Um, did you see the sign in I think the diner? Yes. Oh man. Oops. Yep. Oops. Oh boy. Wait, what? List of people who eat for free. It says Bill Cosby oh, no. and then oh, yeah. no one no else. No one else. <laughs> Whoops. Oh my god. That well, he did hey did didn't he eat for? Oh no! <laughs> Jason Bateman plays a. Uh, Speaking of shitty people, yeah, yeah. Jason Bateman plays a piece of shit. Uh, out of nowhere, out of left field. I thought we were done seeing True famous Fonnies. people. I thought Mirren was the last reveal. Actually, no. There was the drunk girl doing karaoke. That was the girl from. Yes. Did I say girl? I mean woman. I hate when I do that. Uh, what was she? Step Brothers. She's a woman. Is she in Step Brothers? What is she oh. in? She's like the wife in a. I don't the know. The uncredible witness, drunk woman who was like, uh, he slept with me. Yeah, I know. Oh, I no, know no, no, no. About, she's but... from um, uh, Eastbound and Down. Yeah, she's Eddie oh, yeah, Bauer's it. wife. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And I thought she was the last famous person, but then Jason Bateman, out of nowhere. That, this, and, is, this is David Harbour right here. Yeah. Yeah, and David Harbour. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's right. I couldn't think of his name, but Harbour, that's it. Thanks for finally scratching the itch I've been trying to place for the entire, <laughs> since I watched it last night. Bateman, though, has got. Um, He's the the piece of shit guy because he's got slick back hair. He's also Pacey from Dawson's Creek because he spends his entire interview talking about how he has sex with everybody. <laughs> he, he's what does he say to? Is that what Pacey from Dawson's Creek did? I think I was young enough that I don't know why he was the one I had a crush on, but that sort of we've, crystallizes things. We've for just me started there. watching, and every he turns everything to like, well. If you were sexually active like me, you'd understand that. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, see that girl over there? Yeah, I've kissed her twice stuff in there. on the lips. You like it. all of his For the lines. horny teens. You know who that was for? That was for us being yeah. like, yes. is this normal? And Pacey was like, 
dude, I got you. I can't show it to you because we're on the WB, but I can tell you that I do well, it. The best all thing the time. about Dawson's Creek is that everybody fucks each other at one point or another. Like, oh, it's, there's not a People single. People were just too hot. Too yeah. hot. Not a supposed single to be that hot in high school. Uh, relationship <laughs> that didn't that get. Hot in high school. They should do a Dawson's Creek reboot where, like, you check in on those people now and they're all just like. The night Townies. before Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Check in on most of them. Yeah. All right. Unfortunately. Oh, that's right. We haven't gotten to well, that episode, but we so we we, we we pick episodes at random. We tell the the listeners to pick two numbers, and then we watch the corresponding episode of Dawson's Creek. I mean, Creek. you guys are just an idea factory. Oh, this is works. That's like a right thirty-one thousand dollars idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is... Yeah. That's good. That seems right. That seems properly rated. Fine. Uh, yeah, the Cosby Unks. thing was that the last thing that you mentioned? Oh yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Not great. That wasn't awesome. Not good. What was Not great good. is when Helen Mirren wants to know about this woman who died. And do you remember what she says when she wa- says she wants to learn everything about this girl? No. She says, "I want to know everything. Who she Wait, knew? I do know who she blew." And it is <sighs> so like. For someone who is just murdered, like <laughs> extremely Doctor Seuss, <laughs> like, they have no respect for the dead in this movie no. at all. Mm, no. They are mm. horrible to this girl. Mm, who they she really knew? are, but it does who make a lot will. of sense. They make Helen Mirren do an offensive uh, impersonation of a British person. She was saying all the like bollocks, all the words that like uh, we think British people say. Like I think she said "bugger off" at one point, and I was like, "This is you're making her pander to the American audience watching a Ben Affleck movie." Who's like, "Oh, you sound like you're from London." Uh, She's yeah. saying all the London words. She crushed it. I mean, damn if you wouldn't kiss that lady on the mouth, because I would. Well, there was She's a funny just thing. A we were watching. Show. We were watching the. The movie, and there was a scene in which. Were you? Yeah, we we uh, we did the assignment. We How did about that. you? Uh, yeah, I did half of it. <laughs> Shut up, <you> dorks. <laughs> I think the teacher was gonna collect. You it. watched it, fucking loser. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a scene did the work. in which a Helen Mirren and Rachel McAdams were standing next to each other, and DJ goes, "Ha, oh, what a beautiful woman," and Rachel McAdams ain't bad either. So, no, no, I mean, they, they were showing all three. They showed Russell Crowe, and I was like, so beautiful. And then I said, she ain't bad either. But then they, but then I was like, it could be Helen Mirren, Wow, Pete, too. good job. Way to, could be any way to fuck up the joke, dude. What, they're the all, they were all like line. in makeup and everything. Fun. They looked good. I was trying to give you like a, a DJ also thinks she's very, very beautiful. He was beautiful. trying to say, look, oh, he's such a good guy. He yes. also likes the old lady. That's right. <laughs> I know, I get it. That's right. Well, ladies, did you, are heart. you keeping track? DJ gets say... points for that because he said he'd sleep with Helen Mirren. But not even really, Pete just kind of made it up. Sorry, I, I was just I talking to the girls. Could you guys hear me? everyone thinks that Helen Mirren's pretty, right? Yeah. I mean, for oh, sure. Well, everyone should back off. Get in line. I'm first. <laughs> Dibs. Um, my favorite thing about the Rachel McAdams situation, she's got this short haircut, which of course she does, because if you're focused on your job, that's just what it has to be. And she, <laughs> you know, they show her sleeping, not with a man, but with a uh, paper and uh, no pen. Lots of paper in the bed with her. No, no man and no pen, which becomes a very central plot oh, yeah. point in a way that I cannot express how angry it makes me. Because we do have to talk about the whole blogs versus print media, how funny it was, this movie existing in the place that it did. Um, but they have her do this thing with her hair where it's like very complicated, pulled back. But because it's pulled back and it's a little like got tendrils coming out, it's, it might be too lady of a word for you guys, but it's like when, you know, the little what hairs. Does it mean? Yeah. It's supposed to make her look like she's hardworking, so her hair's back. She doesn't have time to care what she looks like. Meanwhile, she looks like a bridesmaid. She looks like she got this complicated... To pull short hair back is actually much harder than pulling long hair back, because you just toss that shit on top of your head into a knot. She's got these, like, braids and clips, and I'm like, this is a woman who I'm supposed to think takes her job more seriously, because I've got insider knowledge, and I know that that means... A woman who actually cares about her job usually would it, look well, something they, like they this. also though uh, not to be like well what if it were a man look how they make russell crow look he rocks the- i kept forgetting he wasn't a cop the he whole ro- movie i was like this guy's a <laughs> shitty cop and i was like oh he's a journalist that's why he rocks the button down uh with the the collar like not buttoned down which why would that's 
that would never make sense. Nobody, even if they didn't know what the purpose of the shirt was, would get that wrong. But they so try to be like, I would. This guy's You're supposed a... to always button the collar onto those little buttons. I mean, I'd, it, always it's chaos. If not, if if there is the button, you got to do it. Right? It'd be chaos. DJ, I think that might be a you yeah. thing more than an everybody no, because, thing. Look, if you I don't, don't think I've ever buttoned one this, of those, and I worked going, at a steakhouse. Fly all over the place. No, yeah, dude, fine. that's normal. I yeah. think that's what it's I think supposed to look. I don't think so. I'm going to Google this Wouldn't because be. this might change your life. You, we might be yeah. about to. Do you have to button This might be down. like you said something thinking it was universal and you're about to find out that it's just you. That just like, happens in your I house. like that you mentioned uh, that you thought Russell Crowe was a cop the entire movie because <laughs> this movie this movie could have easily been about detectives mm. instead of journalists. You know it was adapted from a, t a British TV show and it made me wonder if this was about detectives when it was originally written that, because it, it was like, why are they be. acting like cops? They are, they are better cops than the actual cops. They beat them to every the piece cops of are evidence. about yeah. it. Yeah. They're make, you're, like, you're making us look bad. It's like, well, because you're bad at your job and these journalists are doing it awesome. Shout um, out to the cop. That guy is um is in Billions. Oh, like the dad okay. on 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 one of the of the girl on Billy. I don't know. But just just ran the numbers. Question is, my ahead. question is like this movie seems to know nothing about the world of journalism or how it's yep. how it's treated, and it could easily be replaced by cops, and lose <laughs> nothing to the story. So mm -hmm. why not just do a movie about cops? But I, I like the combination. There's a great Optics. scene with Affleck and Crow where like you realize because they hand this to you that like. Oh, okay. They got to figure something out, and they're going to use the combination of the kind of evil lessons journalists have learned, or like the, the their ways and their ways of mm -hmm. like pulling shit. The dark arts. Yes, exactly. The dark arts of a journalist, and certainly the dark arts of a politician. I was like, oh, okay. I'm sure there's been like a thousand movies like this before, but I can get into this. Uh, update: Business Insider says you should caps lock. Pete sees this. I Caps see lock. This. Always button your collar buttons. Oh, my but maybe that's only never, in business. You should never even consider. Oh, if it's with a tie, you should never even consider leaving the collar buttons unbuttoned. Now this makes me want to like go Kyrie and be like, well, just because all of you are saying this is how it's done, mm. now I'm not like, I'm what, what's going to happen? My own rules. I don't. Yeah. yeah. And then Ted Cruz mm. is going to send out a tweet <laughs> oh, no. like congratulating me Ugh. you know what shocked me about this movie from the first second they showed the office of the washington globe uh <laughs> paper the amount of paper in oh, this movie so much paper. there is the office is covered in paper and now granted again i have not been in an office in like two years but I remember the last time I was there, there not being that much paper everywhere. A lot of times, especially with jobs where people come in and come out, they just bring a laptop, plop it on an empty desk, work, and then go. And it was fascinating to be like, damn, we really were. We may not feel the progress, and I think it might be too little too late in terms of saving our planet. Sorry to break the bad news to you. But it's like we did make a little bit of progress. We didn't uh, don't have that much paper anymore. Did you? But I reach guess it is a newspaper. <laughs> Did you reach the, uh, you did not reach the twist then? I did. I'm just saying, I didn't stop watching it. I got to the credits. I just forgot oh, cool. to check back in and pay more attention to it. I kept checking in and then all of a sudden I checked back in. I'm like, oh, I missed something. I actually think it'd be beneficial for, I was going to say our listeners, for your listeners, if our. you would, could just go like front to back as quick as possible without taking the diversions. What is the plot of this film? The plot is trying to figure out who killed this girl a girl dies at the beginning yeah the politicians is is sleep the politician ben affleck is sleeping with her uh there's a did he or didn't he have something to do with her dying then you find out that oh and his best friend his roommate from college is russell crow mm. and that is he's a journalist at the aforementioned globe the one that's located in Washington, not all the other globes across the country. And then he, uh, there's interesting moments where it's like, the is he going to be your journalist or is he going to be a friend? And I, the actual best line I think in the movie was when Russell Crowe was like, right now I have to be both, which was like, ooh, interesting. And so then it's like he's investigating his friend and then other, on the other side he's being accused of defending his friend just because he's his friend. And then he's getting it from the other side that's saying that he's not doing enough defending and he's just trying to take him down. 
And then you find out that Ben Affleck is investigating a government, basically the outsourcing of homeland security to private contractors, a.k.a. mercenaries. And he's trying to investigate that. So then you find out this company's involved and the paper is investigating this guy instead of giving it to the cops. And the cops are mad and were made to feel like that was wrong of them to be mad when really it's like the cops are the cops. They should be mad. You uh, chase down a suspect. And that whole scene in the parking garage where Russell Crowe comes out and he's like hiding in the, and he goes into the parking garage. It's like a girl running upstairs in a horror movie where you're like, why wouldn't you just stay out? You were about to be outside. And the point is, this is where I get lost. So they find out that the company. Point core. That, what is it? Is it point core? Point core, yeah. Point, yeah. yeah, dumb. Very dumb. I'll tell you name. what, though, I was fired up about it because he was fired up. Ben, ben Affleck was very mad about them. So he I was, was very, mad he about seemed them. like he was going to take them down from the inside. And I think actually part of the reason they weren't giving this stuff to the cops is because they didn't know how high up this thing goes, which is a very this Love era that. of yeah. type of movie. Who knows who's in Who on can it? you trust? Yeah. And so it, they so then he, they find out, right? It seems like Russell Crowe's finding out that the they tried to kill uh, the girl. Because, to get at him, like he was, she was basically killed by point. They core. had used her as a spy. That's they right. hired this woman who had horrible financial problems and said, "We will solve these for you if you spy, if you have an affair with this man and spy on him for us." Then they got close. She caught some feels, mm -hmm. very Mister Deeds, and decided, mm. "You know what? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want this guy very to be Mr. my Deeds. mark. I want him to be my man." And mm. Then, also very she's all that yes and True. then she has to rest in peace because they say that's not part of the deal she stops mm -hmm. reporting back yeah so she oh, yeah, so yeah. they, she they kill rogue. her or so yeah, yeah, yeah. Think. yeah well she's was making 26 grand a month banging ben affleck seems like a crazy pretty good deal to me crazy but wait so then what happens you pick up from here i did such a great job and you finish it out with the twist okay the twist or are is... you not spoiling the movie? No, no, oh, please, please. Okay, she's making sure. So I just didn't want to be that guy. The twist is, and Pete and I, I think, both agreed, we don't totally get it, but we do get that the twist is Ben Affleck had her killed. The guy that is gunning people down the whole time is somebody that uh, was in the military with Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck saved his life when they were in the military, and the guy just feels like he owes so much to Ben Affleck that, like, Ben Affleck put in a call because he thought that this woman was acting sort of sketchy and he didn't trust her. Uh, it turns out she was acting sketchy because she was like in fear of her life that the point core mm -hmm. people are after her. So Ben Affleck hires this guy to like watch her, he says, and the guy ends up killing her. And so like ben, her blood sort of on Ben Affleck's hands. And by sort of. Mm -hmm. It is. It, you mean is. Also, yeah. and by ends up, ends up is doing a lot of work in that sentence. Like, and then he just ends up killing her. It's like, well, oh, well. <laughs> does oh, yeah. do that? He killed her. Yeah. Pushes her in front of a train. Yeah. I mean yeah. that 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 guy, the the military friend of Ben Affleck, constantly means business. Which is why when I, Ben Affleck, I think, is pushing it more as a, well, this ended up happening. This is what happened. I, I look. I wanted my problem to be solved. Next thing you know, she's dead. What am I supposed to do? So then, here's do? my question, and I think it might just be because I need your help connecting dots. Why would Ben Affleck have gone and shown the video of her saying she? Oh, because he's like doesn't seem like someone who's about to. Ki Why would he have even because opened up the whole can of worms? Let them say it was a suicide. Yeah. True. Because that's what they originally but, said. But it was were, a suicide. And he's like, it wasn't. Pinning the but that. they were pinning the suicide on him. They were pinning the suicide on him because he said that he was going like to he leave hurt it. He her. wasn't going yeah, to leave his right. wife. Uh, he wanted to have his cake. Yeah. And he too. saw the opportunity mm -hmm. to like take down Point Also Core. take down Point Core, which yeah, 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 yeah. he has Bad a real guy, chip ben on Affleck. his shoulder when it comes to Point Core. It would have been a big political victory for him to take down Point Core. He's very hot A scene on the that trail. I didn't pay attention. Oh, yeah. We also forgot. I forgot to mention he was like a party darling. He was like supposedly going to be the next president or something. Mm -hmm. And that's because he had this. Uh, and now probably not. But, you know, still could. I don't think we can rule it out. Even if it was his fault that girl died, I think he could probably still get up there. Um, there's a scene that I, again, half paying attention to, but could tell was very stupid, and I hope you guys can tell me exactly why, where there was like a t-shirt that the guy was wearing reminded them of a tattoo that helped them put a piece together that I was like, what? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, I didn't understand the tattoo thing. 
that that uh, that's the one they had in the military. Yeah, or they like were. The so symbol, it's like he. Right? It, is it is it like a guy that worked at Best Buy, assuming that when he goes home, he keeps wearing his Best Buy polo? Was this guy basically wearing <laughs> yes. a shirt that says, like, I'm in this military thing? It doesn't feel like something that a mercenary tries to advertise. It seems like a, it seems like quite a stretch. Yes. To to pair those two based on yes. that evidence. It feels very convenient. Yes. Fair. For but, the plot. And also... But, I mean, wasn't isn't it also just very convenient that Jerry Maguire didn't end up only having two <laughs> Are you going to try to say that this movie is better than Jerry no, Maguire? No, and that's, what, that's why this I knew this was going to be a tough matchup. Because I was like, there's fucking no... I, I haven't seen one of these movies, and I know that this isn't going to be particularly close. But, mm. yeah, I was, I was just saying, like, in this movie's defense, Jerry Maguire takes some leaps, too. Yeah, and I think that the, oh, both yeah, of those yeah. movies don't necessarily have the strongest understanding of, like, the world in which they're trying yeah. to live. Totally. Uh, and that bugs me, like, uh, Jerry Maguire. Maybe it's because we're, we're in sports media. They're like, hey, one's a sports movie, and it we're... doesn't know sports. You're Some of us. Sports <laughs> I, think it, I think it – Jerry Maguire does, I think, a, an, okay an okay job, job yeah. for a movie about sports. Yeah. Right? Yes. Whereas it, I would say it does a, 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 a better than usual job in certain aspects and probably worse than usual job in others. And probably yeah. probably better job at the sports, sports thing than this does yeah, news, at yeah. journalism. Yes, yes. right. Definitely. I would Definitely. hope so. Yes. I this would is one of the, this is so. one of the worst journalism journalism movies I've ever seen. Although they yeah. do make sure they have like every uh, visual jur- like journalist aesthetically covered that mm-hmm. Russell Crowe is... He's always wearing like the same denim shirt. There's a kid, there's a guy that's just always wearing a baseball cap. They yeah. always put that. He's wearing I think he's wearing an Orioles hat in this movie. And I'm like, "Man, you could just take you could take this cast and throw shattered glass people in and shake them all up and no one would be able to tell journalism on screen." Mm. Mm. Um, the way they did, the way they talked about blogs and websites I was like, damn, this the time that this movie was made in, we might hear a www in this movie just like earnestly. Somebody might say, go to www.washingtonglobe.com. Have you seen Gili? No. Ben Affleck delivers a uh, a oh, classic man. URL line. He mm. he plays a he plays a gangster and he does. Oh yeah. He plays I know a... nothing about that movie. Yeah, I we, just skipped it. We watched so many Ben Affleck movies. We got distracted during it and watched as good as it gets. You got, you got, I'm sorry, you got distracted by another movie while watching a movie? While discussing Ben Affleck movies, we were like, man, 1997 had so many great movies going on, and like Ben Affleck was in so many movies, and then we were just clicking around Wikipedia, and we were like, damn, as good mm. as it gets cleaned up that year, was it that good? Mm. And then one of the days we did it, it was that, as good as one it of the got. days of Affleck week was just as good as it gets, which has nothing to do with Ben <laughs> Affleck, but in Gili, he, uh sees some kids on like a laptop, playing around with a computer, right? Yeah. He takes it says sweet laptop smashes it down and says Peter here's suckmydick.com and he grabs oh he grabs an, oh an area God. of his body that was it his dick it, it, oh, you, you have it. seen Gili. <laughs> <laughs> uh, educated guess uh there was this a uh, line uh that is delivered by Russell Crowe in this one. And it says, uh, he's talking to Rachel McAdams, who is famously the blogger. And he says, mm-hmm. isn't your job to quote unquote up Chuck online? Oh my God. Pete, uh, I wrote up Chuck. Chuck, you dork. Yeah, Don't right? ever talk shit to me and say up Chuck, trying to say that I, you're cooler than me. You just said up Chuck, grandpa. Yeah, it was like kind of the 2009, honestly, might be the perfect year for the peak of like shitting on bloggers like oh well what does a blogger know and it's like i don't know how to write and like how to gather information like a, a lot of the same things you know actually right. you're very similar just They're the same is... job one is just the new version right <laughs> right yeah he's uh but he he comes around pretty quickly and there's a funny scene where helen mirren tries to replace rachel mcadams on the story and he's like you should be fighting to stay on this story and mirren's like what you like her now and he's like uh it's She's like 40 fine. minutes into the movie <laughs> yeah. like we, we should probably be teamed up by now yes i like her <laughs> and all of like this this fit that he was throwing is just very quickly over 
And then like the big the big win for her is that her name got listed first on the byline. Oh, and also that he let her hit send. <laughs> yeah. He types the whole thing and then he's and they're like, "What's where are you going? Don't you want to hit send?" And he like looks back over his messenger bag Very and he's dramatic. like, "You she, hit send." And, and then she, she just says, literally clicks send. She says, "Send it." And then dabs and then yeah. presses the button. That's it. it. Came out in 2020. Send it. When did people Yeah, pretty say cool. Send she it? was early. People send don't give Rachel like McAdams 4 years ago. Yeah, people don't give Rachel McAdams credit for the dab, but it was she she was the originator in this movie that no one saw, Rachel and we McAdams. still have yet to figure out why it's called State of Play. Yeah, That's that the biggest question. Big question. Okay, so this th- felt like um, what are those? Remember when those two White House movies came out? Ah, um, oh, Just Olympus Friends has fallen. and No Strings <laughs> Attached. Yeah, <laughs> Just Friends and Friends with Benefits. Or yeah, friends yeah. with yeah. Benefits, and uh, that's no, it. Yeah. No Strings Attached. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but Olympus uh, has fallen. This is that for and, journalism. Yeah. This was like one of those types of. It was like a thriller that wanted to be those movies. Had enough famous people, but it was about reading and reporting. Okay, million dollar question: What was the better movie? Do we think between these two? I'm gonna say I mean, it's tough to say. I, who, really who, tough who, to who say. Who could even want to go first here? Because I'm I'm waiting for what other people think before I feel Jerry comfortable Maguire giving for my me. answer. Me, Jerry, Guests Jerry always Maguire. go first. Yeah, go go yeah. first, Katie. Oh, well, I mean, drum roll, please. It was Jerry Maguire. I mean, it was a better movie. I don't, no offense to stay to play. And if that's your favorite movie, do, do you. Like, yeah, live your life. Who cares what I say? I can't imagine Who that am being I? anybody's favorite movie. Like, that's no, not it's shitty. gotta be. You know why? Not you know how I know it's someone's favorite movie? You wanna know my dad's favorite movie? God, is this gonna please. resonate with yes. you? Stay to the play. The Accountant. Well, yo, we watched The Accountant. We watched The for Accountant. A week. My dad quotes The Accountant, which may be the least quotable Absolutely. movie on earth. Ben Affleck doesn't Constant. speak in it. It's like sensory <laughs> overload <laughs> scenes. That's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like half of the movie. You know what my dad does for work? He's an accountant. He's an mm-hmm. assassin. Mm-hmm. That line about the van being a business car, that's your work car, that whatever that stupid line is. You'd think I know it by now. My dad says it all the time. That's and he's like, that's incredible. your work. Use that vehicle for work, right? You can write that off. I'm like, yeah, that's you're just using the only movie that says something that sounds like what you say at work. Tougher question. Mm-hmm. Wait, you guys didn't better, answer the other one. Which is a better movie, The Accountant or Jerry Maguire? Oh. Now that we've oh. eliminated, I've State never of seen play. The Accountant. I just let my dad show me what it. it <laughs> from what I've seen, the preview I've gotten every Thanksgiving, I'm like, this isn't a movie that's for me. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, basically, um, yeah. I uh, I will say. Jerry Maguire, also, that kind of takes a little air. Or, uh, I was completely kidding when I said I was waiting for what other people would say first. DJ, nobody believes you. We know that people... you're going to pick State of Play. I don't know. You were like, you were on, I don't know if you were just you're trying to throw it. me for a loop, but you were into mm-hmm. State of Play. You're like, I don't know, man. There's we'll a see. twist. We'll see. There's a twist. I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad movie. I don't think it's a... I would say it's disappointing for the cast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that cast is stacked. You get a lot more out yeah. of that cast. Yeah. I, I should have been better. I thought it was fine. But I I I, I think it's finding a fine, out like, I don't know movie. why, but finding out it was based on a show that already existed, I was like, Well, you didn't then what did you even do other than just add the most yeah. famous people in the world to a show that Americans hadn't seen yet? But so here's the thing. I think that it's like it's pretty hard to it's hard to like thoroughly dislike state of play. And I would say the same about Jerry Maguire. And that's where, like, the Rotten Tomatoes thing is going to come into play because it's not necessarily, like, a grade for the film. It's the percentage of critics that liked it. Mm. Or uh, and what it, is like, liked? Worth, is it, like, like gave it a 50 or more? Or is it, like, thumbs up, thumbs down kind of? Is, is it pass-fail? I think it's uh, – is it the review is considered favorable? Yes. Okay. So yeah. it could be a review that critiques it but right. says in the end I like it. Good movie right. though. Yeah. And it gets like a po- it still gets a positive thumbs up. Does one thumb up get it in or does it have to be both no. Roger and Andy? There's well, wait, there's no real mind. weight there. RIP. So I mean, I'm yeah. always confused by little blurbs on Rotten Tomatoes because they'll just take an excerpt from the review yeah. and they'll have either the tomato or the Nickelodeon slime falling yep. over it. And sometimes it will have like a positive quote I think from that's a green I think review. that's a tomato. Each I think that's a type splattered, of tomato. It's a green tomato that I don't think it's Nickelodeon slime. I think it means that they threw the tomato. This is why you, so you, you were the expert. You weren't the guest host. You I mean, weren't I haven't the panelist. Been there in a while. You were the, I, just, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think I think that Could makes a wrong. lot of sense. I would say Today, though I don't that uh care if I'm wrong. 
Jerry Maguire is a more unique romantic comedy than mm -hmm. uh, State of Play is a unique political thriller. Action yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you on that, especially because within the first few minutes, we were both like, well, that's from House of Cards. And <laughs> yeah. she's in House of Cards, and that's kind of House of Cards Ian. Um, what did, did you, are we, do we want to breeze past when Russell Crowe was allegedly, was kind of racist? When he calls the drug, first of all, oh, when he's like, yes. she was talking to a, she was talking to a black guy. Was she into drugs? And you were like, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't weird. catch that. But then one. he also, when he called, remember he calls the phone yes. number after he gets it and he's like, what up dog? It's me. It's your boy Kippy. I'm like, oh, what, yeah. who have you ever interacted with in your life? It, it just felt like, what did that name? Yes. And the, the guy on the phone was like, what are you talking about? That is but that's why I said, I'm like, that was one of the scenes where I'm like, Russell Crowe's a terrible cop. And I was like, <laughs> it's because he's a journalist. I keep yeah. forgetting. That, that's a thing that, unfortunately, I'm sure when people saw it in 2009, didn't they even were like, didn't touch their yeah, it doesn't no. register. Yeah. And you no. watch it now and you're like, what the fuck? And that, I, folks, that's progress. That yes, is. right. And watch I mean, an old Letterman interview and you're like, ooh, we he totally. asked that question of that woman. And now you're like, oh, that's a, a, technically the silver lining is it hits different now because we are different now. I Totally, totally. Oh. You, you hope. All right. Well, Jerry Maguire you wins the first been one. Decided. Jerry Maguire, winner of the first tomato fight. Katie, did you enjoy your time tomato fight? Oh, fighting? my God. I mean, an absolute blast. I just want to thank you two, and that's mostly it, for having me here. What a fun. Was this? Did this go how you wanted it to? Yeah. Exactly how we wanted it to go. Yeah. All right. You showed up, we and you watched this. most of the movies. <laughs> Here. I mean, I watched two movies on. I, and again, I don't mean to keep stressing this point, but pretty busy week for me. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't so believe I, you actually I, did it. I know. And not yeah, in like I, a like I wouldn't expect Katie to do it kind of thing. Of like, that's just a that's a big ask to say. Hey, we're doing a yeah. podcast where we watch two movies, and then the person says yes, and you have to say okay. Four to hours clarify, of clarify, like you have to watch. These you two have to watch two movies. Also, you may not say no. Anyway, no Jerry Maguire <laughs> flew very close to the two and a half hour mark, a which movie. is yeah. absurd. Yeah. Longer than they should have been. I remember Dan and I were watching State of Play, and he was doing that thing where he was about to fall asleep, and he's like, "How much longer in this half an hour?" And I was like, "Yeah, you can go. You can go to bed." I'll <laughs> Dismissed. It out by I, I feel like the best part of the State of Play conversation was the group recap. You took, yeah. I would say, yeah. like eighty percent of it. For, at the beginning, you should just go and recap the movie, and then dip off oh, it's into like the reading little side. In class. So that's kind yeah. of how we do our normal movie reviews, where we'll just yeah. kind of review it chronologically, mm -hmm. and then you're kind of hitting beat by beat. But this, I figure, especially with something like Jerry Maguire, do more of a. And again, this is the first iteration of this. Maybe we'll learn as we go. Um, do more of like a, all right, what are the big things with Jerry Maguire? Because we sometimes if you go down in order, you realize like, oh, not all these notes were funny. I wrote no. them down and I should have checked and only said the funny ones. And this way you're like, oh, I didn't really look at them. I have them, but I just remembered the ones that actually came up. So I don't know. Either way works. I think you two are, I hate to shock you. I think you two are going to be the charm of it. We go. <laughs> I, love it. I think it's Thank all you about much. you too. It's all about personalities and also this. I mean, just crushing it. Shout out to the one guy yesterday that was like, maybe in your next job you could try a little harder. I was like, not gonna do that. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm Doesn't only getting older. Like you me. think I'm gonna? You think I care now what I look like? No, I got here. Now I get to do the stuff I like. So deal with this. Hell yeah.